Welcome to the first X's and Argos film session of 2020. I'm Ben Grant. Over the past few months, I have drawn up every single play the Calgary Stampeders ran in 2019 in an attempt to gain a better understanding of what Coach Dinwiddie's offense might look like in Toronto this year. Now, you might be saying, well, he's not the offensive coordinator, though. That's Coach Jackson. Yes, except generally what's going to happen in a scenario like this, if you've got a young coach, especially one that's known as an offensive or defensive specialist, and in this case, Coach Dinwiddie is is known as as an offensive guru, what will happen is he will bring in an offensive coordinator, but for the most part, it's going to be his system that Coach Jackson is running. And I'm sure the two will collaborate. They'll bring in some of the stuff that Coach Jackson has had success with, and you know they'll sort of hammer out their, their own unique offense. But I think you're going to see a lot of influence from the system that brought Coach Dinwiddie so much success in Calgary. Now, in looking at Calgary's offense last year, for the most part, it's a generic CFL five-wide system, but there are a few elements that really stood out as something different. And today we're going to take a look at something we're going to call the search package. It's a series of plays that Calgary used extensively last year and a package I think Coach Dinwiddie's going to install as part of the Toronto Argonauts offense this season. The search package isn't new. In, in fact, a lot of CFL and U Sports teams run a variation of it and, and have for years, but Calgary's search package is far more extensive than I've ever seen before, and they rely really heavily on it. So last year, they ran plays from this package on about 150 snaps, as far as I could gauge. And as with everything in football, like there's a lot of different names for, for formations, plays, concepts, offensive looks. This was called Search in the system that I played in, so I kept that name when I started coaching. And so now you must know it as Search 2. I don't know what Coach Dinwiddie calls it. I don't know what they called it in Calgary last year. But for our purposes, everything we're looking at today, we're going to call the Search Package. And it's a lot of fun. We're going to have a good time looking through this because there's some really cool stuff off of a really simple concept. So the entire Search Package spawns from this one play we'll start with here. It's a, it's a really basic zone run. We're just going to call it Search Right or Search Left. Calgary generally ran this this whole package out of five wide sets like like we're looking at here. But the beauty of it is you can run it out of just about anything. As long as you've got at least one back, you don't even have to be in shotgun. Calgary ran all of their search plays out of shotgun, but it doesn't have to be run like that. Um, there is some flexibility. For search right, the linemen essentially are going to block the gap to their right. So that leaves the backside contained, and he's going to get kicked out by the slot back who comes across from the right side. This is simple, but it is a beautiful play. Now, what makes zone runs really unique is that they're not being run for a specific hole. So you can actually run this exact same play several times, and it's going to look different each time. The running back's path is dictated not on a hole assignment, but rather on defensive alignment or the success of the, the blocking linemen, or even on the spacing of the, the box defenders. So if the defenders don't maintain their spacing, then a gap is going to appear, the running back explodes through it. But on the other hand, if the defenders over-pursue, then there's going to be a big cutback lane that appears. And Now, as we watch this particular play, I'm sure in film study, Coach Dinwiddie would have been going over how he wanted to see a, a cutback here. The freeze coming in, he gets picked up by the slot, Mac Blitz is picked up, and the will is going to get caught in the wash. So this would, in theory, have left the running back one-on-one -on -one with the weak half in space, and that's a win. Now, as we move in a minute to the second variation on this play, I just want to highlight the kickout block from the slot back. So the QB is staring down the contain man as though it's a zone read, as though he might pull it and keep it himself. This sets up the defensive end to get annihilated by the slot back kickout. Admittedly, there's not a lot of contact on, on this particular rep, but the beauty is that you don't actually need to even block him every time now. The threat of the block is enough to slow down the contain man because he's not going to risk coming upfield every time and just getting blasted by that slot back. It just takes, just takes one hit, and now his head's on a swivel. He's going to be taking a look at that at that offensive player coming across looking to, to clear him out. 
And so that in itself does the job. You don't need to block him anymore. You throw in a block every so often, and that contain man is taken care of. The next variation of this play, this is an RPO. We're looking at search left here, so it's a mirror image of what we had last time. Everyone's got the exact same job except the slot back. So now instead of kicking out, because he no longer needs to, he sails past the contain man into the flats, but you see the effect is the same. So watch the contain get taken out here as he anticipates either a kickout block or a zone read pull. And now the quarterback has two options on this play. He can give it to the back as he does here, or he can pull it and quickly get it out to the slot back in the flats. And the coach is watching upstairs. They're going to be looking to see how the defense reacts to the slot back coming across here. Now, this is a fairly easy pre-snap read for the quarterback. It's a three-man front. Backers are well off. The slot back appears to have a lot of room in the flats against the cover three buzz. So you've got the free reacting to the jet motion. He's coming from distance, though. So the next time they run this, even though this was the correct pre-snap read, they'll see up in the booth how much space that, that slot back has. And the next time they get the same look, they're running the same play, the quarterback's going to know, I'm going to pull this here and get this out quickly to my slot back in the flat. And he's just got to make that free miss. And, the, and that's pretty much exactly what the Stampeders did against the Argos. Okay, this part is not as much fun. Uh, this is the exact same play. And they realized early on, ugh. so they realized early on the flats defenders were bailing too deep uh, into zone. And in man, they were just too late reacting to the jet action. Ugh. And the Argos didn't adjust, so the Stamps just kept calling it again and again on a painful day. One of the problems defensively is that as your defense starts widening out to stop the pass into the flats like the Rough Riders are doing here, then the QB just goes right back to handing it off. And there's all sorts of room up the middle. So now you are keeping your backers in the box to stop the run. You're walking up your DBs to defend the pass. And that's when Calgary unveils the third variation of this play. Same look. But now instead of stock blocking, the number one receiver fakes like he's going to block and he zips past the DB on a, on a go. I, I love this. I love this play. I love this, this variation. The number two receiver... The number two receiver hooks, but really this is, this is a pick. He, he's selling it as a hook route, but he's just trying to get in the way of the backer who comes scraping across. This is a bad ball. It's too bad because the, the design is sound on this play. And it's not like you can run this, this exact play every snap. This is when they're overcompensating for that flats pass. We have a good shot of it here from this lower angle. So the number two is just looking to slow down the will. The weak corner, after getting stock blocked on this play all game, comes flying up trying to make a play in the flats receiver, he gets burned. And this, this just has to be a touchdown, a good throw. And this is a touchdown. And they just continue to add a new wrinkle to this package every single week. So against the Riders, they ran a full field passing concept with this action. So it's no longer an RPO here. The defense is still reacting run first because it's that same look. But now you've got six receivers on routes. Here we've got a slow developing route, so a deep dig. And with that same action, they leave the running back and slot back into pass protect. And now the quarterback has all kinds of time to wait for his target to open up. As the receiver comes all the way across the field, that's a nice play. This is the same search action now out of tight pistol. So 
The tight end is going to seal his man inside, and now the slot back leads around the edge. There's no one to kick out, so he turns up field, leads around the edge. Now, against Hamilton, they noticed that when they ran the search action out of that tight pistol formation, the free reacted to the slot back jet. So they end up giving them that exact same look. And as the free vacates, they hit the skinny post over the middle in that void that is left by the, the free who's chasing after that jet action. This, <laughs> this, is, not the best, this is not the best play action you'll ever see. Obviously, it's a miscommunication. Uh, the running back's on the wrong side. But the end result is a success. Free vacates, bingo, down the middle. Tight right pistol, quads are left. Calgary is going to have so much fun with this. They're basically playing with Saskatchewan's brain. They're, they're picking on Saskatchewan's film study, which is, it seems almost unfair. Saskatchewan's so prepared for this package, and that's when Calgary's going to use their own film study against them. So the slot back comes across, and so the, de the defense is thinking, okay, this is, this is search package, we're on it. But then he comes back, and so now they're sort of mentally calling it off. Well, it's not from the search package. But the trailing receiver does continue across the formation. It is from the surge package, and he's wide open for the touchdown. This is, the, this is pretty much the exact same play we saw earlier, but now it's a different receiver crossing and running into that flat with the primary receiver, the first receiver, um, setting up uh, himself basically as a decoy in this play. And you watch, watch Saskatchewan's defense. They, don't, they have no idea. They don't even have the switch down. They just don't know what's happening on this play. This is beautiful. It's fun when it's not the Argos defense, isn't it? All right, Western semifinal. The Stamps give us a final look at the surge package. So the slot back crosses left into the flats. They run a, a flats concept to the backside here. So number one, Skinny's down. We hadn't seen this before. He actually has a corner route, which is kind of cool. The number two has that same pick uh, hook. Uh, you know, he's trying to get in the way of the linebacker in coverage, but he's also running a, a hook route. And the number three breaks into the flats, kind of replacing the, the running back flat that we saw earlier. So the backer is hell-bent on stopping that flats route. And so the QB just waits, and he finds the number two in behind, and he does the rest. This is like amazing growth of a concept from the start of the season to the end of the season. There were just so many variations they had. Calgary ran this play about once out of every nine snaps last season, a play from this package. And it remains to be seen how much we'll see the search package in Toronto, but given the success he saw with it in Calgary and given the fact that both Nichols and Macbeth are the perfect quarterbacks to run it, I think it's going to be the first thing that Coach Dinwiddie installs in Toronto. Thank you so much for joining me on this X's and Argos film session. I had a lot of fun. I hope you got something out of it. Don't forget to check out xsandargos.com for all the latest. And make sure you subscribe to the X's and Argos podcast on your favorite podcast app. My name is Ben Grant. Have an excellent day. May all your pre-snap reads be good ones. I'll see ya.